Um, so far, this, so far this morning, we've heard what pH is. We've heard something how we might treat it, how we might assess it. One of the questions that we get a lot at the PHAs, I also chair the PHA, is is about activity and what can I actually do because of the symptoms, etc. Um, so the next two bits of the, the, the morning sessions, one is about activity, and the other bit that we get lots of questions is about nutrition, which is what's on the agenda. So we've actually flown somebody in very special uh, from uh, Ireland, mm -hmm. Ireland. Um, Cara, how do you, how do you pronounce it? I, I, and Kira. Otherwise, Kira. Otherwise, I'm going to get you to pronounce Thanos. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, which, yeah. so Kira is um, is going to do a, a, a presentation about the very things that we talk about, about what is it, why it's safe to do stuff, and what the benefits are it, as far as activity is concerned. So, over to you. And uh, thank you for coming all this way. Oh, thank thank you. you for bringing thank me you. over. <laughs> I'm going to stand this side so everyone can. Can everyone hear me? Great. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to the PHA UK for inviting me over to speak to you all today. So my name is Kira McCormick. Um, and as Ian said, I am from the Matter Hospital um, working in the PH unit, um, which we're based in Ireland. And I'm a clinical exercise physiologist, so I specialise in exercise and well-being for chronic diseases. But over the last number of years, I've specialised in the area of uh, pulmonary hypertension. So today I'm going to talk around what we know about exercise and pH and hopefully give you confidence that it's um, safe for you to be active. Um, and then we're going to do a little demo. So you can join in if you wish or you can observe whatever you feel uh, most comfortable to do. <clears throat> so before we begin, it's important that we understand the terms because often when we hear the word exercise, people get a bit frightened. They think they need to be, you know, going to the gym three times a week or running the roads, etc. But actually, we need to look at the two words here. So physical activity and exercise. So we use them interchangeably, but actually they have two different meanings and both are very important. So just so patients understand, and for all of us here, what actually is physical activity. So physical activity is any bodily movement produced by our muscles that is above what we do at rest. So anytime if we get up off our chairs and walk out to uh, the coffee dock, we are being physically active, okay? And it's really important uh, that patients are physically active in their day-to-day -day lives. So for some that might look like doing the shopping, if they're able to, uh, going for a walk in the garden, or simply reducing the amount of time they spend sitting during the day. And we know for everyone, um, both uh, general populations and chronic disease uh, populations, that being physically active is super important. And so my, I suppose one key thing, if you can think of today, is when you're sitting down all the time or if you spend a lot of time sitting, is could you move a little bit more? So that might be when the ad break is on, when you're watching a TV program, that you get off the chair and you walk around the kitchen table two or three times. And that mightn't seem like a lot, but if you do do that every day, every week, every month, that adds up to a lot of activity and we know just breaking that sitting time is beneficial for our overall health. So that's physical activity. We then have the term exercise, okay, and this is a little bit different. This is when we do something that's planned and structured and we have an end goal in mind. So that might look like you plan to do three walks in the week um, for a duration of 15 minutes for the next three weeks. After that, then you're going to try and increase that time to 20 minutes, okay? So that's something that's planned and structured, and that's called exercise. And there's lots of different forms, cycling, walking, doing strengthening exercises to look after our muscle and our bone health, um, and things like yoga and Pilates. So I just want you to keep them in mind, the two different terms when we talk about, uh, um, when we go through the rest of the talk. So for exercise um, in pH, we know unfortunately that the symptoms of pH uh, are you know, pH causes unpleasant symptoms that can prevent us from engaging in activities that exert ourselves. So breathlessness, um, we may feel fatigue, that increase in heart rate or sensation often stop patients because they might be fearful that they're, you know, it's not good for them to increase their heart rate or uh, breathlessness. So these sensations, what we see and what I've observed over the last number of years working in pH is that our patients fall into this cycle of inactivity. Okay, so I'll just, up at the top here, what often happens is the sensations or symptoms of pH um, cause patients to become maybe fearful to engage in exercise, and we'll look at that in a moment. They then avoid activities that exert themselves, and, and so this reduces their overall activity. 
which then reduces our muscle strength um, and our ability to do things and our functional capacity then as well. And we fall into this cycle and months and weeks pass by and all of a sudden activities of daily living become much harder. And, you know, it's important that we recognise that. Um, and But the important word here is fearful. So we in Ireland, um, when I was doing my postdoctoral research, we conducted some surveys to understand why or what is, um, I suppose, the barriers and the attitudes of pH patients towards exercise. And we found lots, but one of the key things that we um, found was that fear was very prevalent among our patients. And that fear looked different for um, different patients. For some, they were fearful of overexerting themselves because they previously had a syncope or blackout when they ran for the bus quite quickly and had, um, were fearful that that might happen again. Some were fearful of becoming breathlessness because they were told it's not good to become breathlessness or they just didn't like the sensation. And others had fear that they might damage themselves due to maybe their lack of understanding of what exercise, uh, what happens when we exercise. So for some of you in the uh, room, this might resonate. Maybe show of hands, does anyone feel like that? No? No fear in, oh, one or two, Great. Oh, a few more. Yeah, so you might be fear, it might just be hesitance to engage. So maybe fear might be too strong of a word, but it's important to recognise that you're not alone if you feel like that. And those, uh, those feelings um, are very relevant. And so the question I always get asked and we still um, um, we wonder about, is it actually safe for me to exercise with pH? And the good news is, is that we know now it is safe for patients to, who are stable on therapy to engage in physical activity and exercise. And important, again, those two words, people might be at different stages, whether they're physically active and or engaging in exercise. So we've lots of lots of research and I won't bore you with it all, but I'll just let you know that we know that exercise is now is safe and effective as an add on therapy. And it's actually in the guidelines now that we promote this among our patients. So that should be really good reassurance that the current guidelines now promote uh, patients to be physically active. And so the benefits. Um, you might, if you engage in exercise, you might already know, but it actually helps reduce breathlessness over time because activities that you normally do become easier when you become a little bit fitter and stronger, your muscles increase, it, um, your breathlessness can decrease. It increases your exercise ability, improves your muscular function. So getting up and down off the chair, maybe putting your jumper over your head, lifting stuff become a little bit easier for you. It improves quality of life. And that's a really big one that we see throughout all the exercise uh, research is that improvement in quality of life and can help um, improve your overall mood and decrease anxiety and depression that's related with pH. So overall, exercise can have a whole host of benefits uh, um, as an add-on therapy. And you might wonder, well, what, what kind of exercise can I do? And we do know that aerobic exercise, so that's like walking, cycling or swimming, is really beneficial for patients. But also respiratory exercises, so working, if you do something like yoga, where you're working on your breath work, that's really um, useful for our patients as well. And resistance exercises. So I'm going to demo one later on, and you've all done it maybe 10 or 12 times this morning, once we demo it later. But exercises that work our muscles are important. And again, just doing that in a safe manner. So in, we can use our body weight alone just to uh, stimulate our muscles, or we can add in small light weights um, to to um, improve this as well. So hopefully I've convinced you all that exercise um, is good for you or and or physical activity depending on where you're at. And so you might ask, well, what, what, where do I begin? Okay. And for some people in the room, you might say, oh, well, I already go for a walk each day. Or some people might resonate that, God, I spend a lot of time sitting. So it's important that everyone's individual. So for some, it might be just that you, after today, you consider being a little bit more physically active in your day. Or for others, you might want to start engaging in some regular exercise, like going for a walk um, more consistently during your week. So it is important, and we always do this, is that you recognise your uh, limitations and symptoms. Um, and so we do ask you to become somewhat breathlessness uh, when you're exercising. We do promote that. Um, but again, it's um, I suppose it's learning what your limits are, and everyone's limits are a little bit different. We do encourage you to consult with your pH medical team before you begin to undertake exercise, just to make sure that they're happy and so everyone knows um, where, where, that you are beginning. 
it's really important that we you start slow and gradually, okay? So I don't want you all jumping off the chairs today and going for a run or feeling like you can. That's definitely not what we're trying to do. But it might be considering, God, today I might try a 10-minute 10, a 10 walk, okay? Starting as small as you like um, and slowly bu uh, building that up. And that's really, really important that you don't go from zero to 90, that you slowly build it up so you can understand how to manage symptoms and also understand your limitations. It's important maybe the temperature, consider that as well. You know, we know for some patients it, it, outside, if it's too hot or too cold, can have negative impact um, implications for them. So maybe indoors is better for you. Wearing suitable clothing is important. And I clearly did not listen to my own advice with demo exercising today. But anyway, <laughs> um, and just making sure you're feeling well enough to exercise on the day and you've taken your medication as per normal. Um, and so what we, as I said earlier, we do uh, promote, so some of the normal things that might happen when you exercise is you become light to moderate breathlessness, but that subsides once you rest um, afterwards. You might feel a little bit sweaty. You might have some leg pain um, or leg fatigue during the actual exercise and some joint pains, but this would subside once you stop Abnormal symptoms then where we would advise you to stop exercising um, will be if you get excessive shortness of breath, you get some chest pain, palpitations or severe headaches. So at that point, we would suggest that you stop exercising, you rest. Hopefully it subsides. If not, you seek medical um, attention for that. Okay. So and I know I've flown through that, but we'll get to the good part, I think. Um, so everyone's looking really excited. Um, so I'm going to grab a chair over. So if you wish to join in, you can. Um, so I'll show two alterations, maybe if you want to stay seating for the first one. Um, but for anyone who wants to stand and join in, if you want to stand up behind your chair, that would be fantastic. If anyone wants. Again, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> sorry, there's no... <laughs> Great, so you might want to spread out. Um, What's the share, <laughs> Great, so it's good to get everyone up and moving. Um, so you might have a little bit of space. So if you um, feel more comfortable, it's always good to have the chair near you, either just to rest on or have something to lean on. If not, you can put your hands on your hips if you're feeling more comfortable, whatever you like. So this one is a really good one when you're waiting for the kettle to boil, because we all know how long the kettle takes to boil when you're watching it. So instead of watching it, you could do some activity. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our hands on our hips, and it's important that we're looking up, not looking down at our feet. Okay, and it's important we don't hold our breath. So breathing normally, okay? And Now, we're going to start off nice and slow. So looking forward, you're going to tap one toe behind and then back to center. And you're going to change your uh, foot each time. So tipping the toe back. So this is just really nice and gentle. Whatever pace you can. This might challenge your balance and coordination. You have to think left and right. So nice and slow. Good. Great. Okay, so you keep going there. Um, to make this a little bit harder, what you might like to do is bring in your arms. So again, this definitely challenges your coordination. So you're going to raise your hand up and step back. Okay, and you can maybe, if you're able to, increase your pace. So behind, together, behind, together. Great. Good. Can we go for 10? That's it. Nine. Well done. Eight. Seven. Take a seat back down. We're not finished, <laughs> but I want you for this one. You can take a seat. We're going to do it from sitting to standing. So, this exercise, um, you've all done it to stand up today, um, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, your heart rate is everyone feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, great stuff. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is called a sit to stand. So you all do this and it's a really, really important functional exercise that you do uh, several times in the day. Okay, but we, we can add this in to have a more rep uh, repetition. So this one's really important. So I'm going to demonstrate and then you can practice it every time you get off the chair. So next time you get up off the chair, you're going to take 10 attempts to get up instead of just one. Okay, so what, <laughs> what you're going to do is you are going to sit uh, with your knees and heels in line. So I don't want your feet back here. So everyone have a look down. 
Yeah, you shouldn't be, your feet should not be behind because you're going to put too much pressure on your knees. You want a nice strong base, okay? Ideally for this, you cross your hands, but for some people that might be a little bit challenging for now, so you might need to use the chair to push up or you might want to use um, the table. Now, as I recommended, do not wear high heels uh, when you're doing these, um, but it adds to the challenge. So what you're going to do, I'm going to dem demonstrate first because your breathing is important as, as well. So what you're going to do is take a deep breath in and as you stand up, you're going to push out the air, okay? So breath in and breathe in on the way back down bum on chair and stand up good and down don't plunk yourself down nice and slow up good and slowly back down well done can we go for five up good and back down that's it four up and back down well done three up and back down good two up and back down and last one <laughs> up and back down and you can say seated well done everyone give yourself a clap <laughs> great stuff <laughs> great so that's something might seem minimal but what we would do if you were adding this into an exercise uh, plan what you could do um, at home quite easily is if you wanted to add a little bit of movement in so you could start by beginning by marching on the spot okay and what i always encourage people to do is turn on your favorite song and try and move for the duration of that song it's a great way to um, for the clock to pass by you can dance you can march walk around the kitchen okay so you might do that for the duration of your song then you have hold on to the countertop and you do your tap backs okay to make it a little bit harder then you can add in your arms if you're able for and then you do 10 of your sit to stands you take a rest and then you repeat it all again okay so you might be able to only do that once and then a week later, you might try add two rounds of it in and then three rounds. OK, so that's just a really nice way um, that you can add a little bit of movement into your day and where you can begin. Just catch my breath. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully, um, I suppose it's important that we today's talk is not about making anyone feel, God, I, I, I don't do any activity. It's about encouraging you to maybe be, to think about where uh, to begin. So what's important is that you assess your own current level activity level. So no two people are the same. And um, so it's important you just look at think, well, yeah, I do a little bit of walking, but maybe I could do a little bit more or um, I don't really do any exercise. So I'm going to start with adding more physical activity into my day. So it's good to have a think about where you are at. OK, where could you add more movement into your day? So good things is you might walk to the supermarket, maybe parking a little bit further back in the car park just to add a little bit more in um, is a good way to do it. Or maybe it's that you spend um, a long period of time in the evening watching TV so the ad breaks is when you're going to get up and move a little bit more. Become aware of your routine and your time you're spent sitting, as I said, and try to begin to uh, incorporate short bites during your day. Depending on your baseline, begin with five minutes, okay? So remember, in terms of exercise, something is better than nothing. So you might start off with five minutes and slowly and gradually increase that over time. A good way to keep track is marking it in your diary, okay? So you might mark your progression where you started so you, it's nice to see um, how you've got on. And then slowly aim to increase it. Um, and when you're ready, try to increase the amount of time you spend exercising, okay? And of course, if you hit a speed bump, what's important is when you feel well enough again is that you get back to it. The longer we leave it, we all know, it's much harder to get back into it. So it's important to think, OK, I've had maybe a week that I haven't been quite well. So I'm going to start back at five minutes this week and build back up slowly. And that happens for everyone. OK, so it's really important not to become disheartened if you get a little setback. It's just to begin where you left off or maybe taking it back a little bit and working it up gradually. OK, and I suppose it is important to remember that you're doing your best with what you can. So wherever you start on this needle, it's for your own self to push forward on that. Um, so take home message is, I suppose, some activity is better than nothing. And um, plan, try and plan it into your week, particularly if you have appointments. Maybe those are the days that are busy and you, you choose to exercise on other days of the week um, and start off small. And thank you very much.
Thank you very much.